Hello guys, this is Alex from Masters of Ultrasound and today we're going to review the Cosmos device. As you can see, it is a wired face array scanner with an integrated tablet and it has continuous Doppler as a unique characteristic. Although it is capable to scan the heart, lungs and abdomen, it is very cardiology oriented and thus it is very optimized to do that. It has a lot of imaging modes specific for cardiology and it has also very good image quality regarding the heart. I won't go through all the technical details since you can find them on their webpage that you can have down below in the description box, I'll put their link, but I'll focus on the live demo and clips to see the image quality and that you can obtain your own conclusions by yourself and not because of what I say or my opinion, etc. Since it doesn't have the screen record option in this integrated tablet, I had to obtain the clip separately and now let's check the boot up time. As you can see it has a button here. Okay, it's ready. 37 seconds. And now let's do a live demo on myself. Bear in mind that I'm sitting on a chair, so the views won't be the optimal ones. So let's start with a parasternal long axis view. As you can see here. And you can see here a parasternal long axis. As you can see, the image quality is really good. We're gonna try the M mode, and as you can see, it's updating live. The M mode is really, really good. So here you're seeing it at the aortic valve level and here mitral valve at the parasternal long axis. And here you can see a TAPSI measurement which is an estimate of right ventricle contractility. And I will show you as well the pulse wave Doppler and continuous wave Doppler with this view since it's the only one I can obtain on myself. So, and measure if you pick pause the image, you can just measure the slope. You can see on the right upper corner where you're pointing exactly and here you can see the velocity and acceleration. And here you're watching the E and A waves of the mitral valve flow. So all these clips are taken at the mitral valve flow in an apical four chamber. And here you're seeing the, that I used to do the automated analysis at the end of the video. And here you're having another patient show you the continuous Doppler as well. Again, this is not the optimal view, but it's the only one I can obtain on myself. So this is a super sternal notch view. And here you have an apical 5 chamber pointing at the left ventricle outflow track. And here a parasternal short axis at the aortic level showing the right ventricle outflow track. Now let's see a color Doppler. And here you can see an aortic regurgitation. You can see the arrow is pointing to the aortic spark showing the aortic regurgitation jet and here it's a mitral regurgitation. And here is a patient without mitral regurgitation so that you can see the difference. In my humble opinion the do color doppler is quite good on the Cosmos device and this clip is just to see how it's seen a personal short axis. It doesn't have anything special. And this is a super sternal notch view without color Doppler, so that you can compare. And this is with color Doppler. Let's see a personal short axis right now. Here you can see the papillary muscles. Here you can see my aortic valve, which is normal tricuspid valve. And again, I'm gonna increase a little bit the gain here. just for you to see it better. So this is the classical parasternal long axis of myself so that you can compare over brands. I think it's really good image quality for V mode. This is my personal short axis. You can see the papillary muscles. And this is an apical four chamber of a patient with a natural septum aneurysm. You can see how it's bouncing. This is the same patient of the apical three chamber. You can see the image quality of the myocardium is really good. And this is an apical two chamber of the same patient. 
This is an apical floor of a patient with severe hypokinesis. You can see that the myocardium contractility is severely impaired. And this is the, another patient with a parasternal long axis. This is a parasternal short axis of the same patient. You can see it has a really good image quality because of a good echocardiographic window. This is a par high parasternal short axis at the aortic valve. And this is another one from a different patient. So you can see the differences between different echo windows. And now you'll see two different apical four of random patients. That was the first one, and this is the second one. Now we can also obtain a subcostal view. And here I will show you abdominal images for those interested. This is the liver kidney interface at the right Morrison's pouch. This is a transverse abdominal view showing hepatic flow and inferior vena cava. And this is a quick fanning around the right kidney from superior pole to inferior pole. And finally a close view around the hepatic parenchyma and vessels. And it has a very interesting tool here which is the out-labeling. So if we were able to obtain an apical four chamber, which is kind of difficult if I'm sitting on a chair and I don't have really good access, it out-labels which chambers you're viewing right now. So it will be really interesting for teaching. I'm not able to obtain a good apical four chamber right now. I'll put a clip better. Then you have the auto-grading, which is this scale. And based on the image quality, it will become greener and go to the bottom. And the last help you have is the auto guidance, which is also really interesting, which helps you position the transducer correctly. And then you record the apical four and then an apical two, and I'll just show you what it, what it obtains. And you obtain something like this, and here you have the ejection fraction that the device calculated and the systolic volume. And you can see here the two frames that the device selected from the apical four chambers clip, and here the two frames from the apical two chambers clip. And if you click on one, you can see the frame that it selected and the systolic one. And again, you can change it if you click here to set your own frame in case you disagree with the device. And you can see this was the clip. And this is the frame that it selected for the diastolic and here for the systolic. And you can also do the same with the apical two clip. If you click here, this was the whole clip. And here you can see the frame that it selected for the systolic, diastolic sorry, and here for the systolic. And there's another interesting thing, which is this special controls. If you click here, you're able to manage the tablet with the controls from this. This is a click, a slide, and another click. And since you're able to hold the tablet like this, you have one finger here, another one here, and this is the slide. This can be really interesting in case you don't have anywhere to put your device and you have to hold it with your left hand. In my humble opinion, there aren't too much settings. And as you can see, these are the options. That's it for the imaging preferences. This is for the other device, which is not the torso one, but the torso that you can connect the ECG leads and kind of a stethoscope to just hear the breath. This is the date and time, auto power, sound, brightness, connected device, and nothing. So that nothing much here. And here you have another preset as well. One is for the abdomen, and the other one is for the lungs. And now you're seeing the lungs. Since this is a face array probe, it can go through the ribs. And here you're seeing the, my lung, how it is changing with inspiration. And here you have the pleural line. Again, if I. Here you're seeing the pleural. This is the pleural sliding with every inspiration, as you can see. And these are artifacts from the air, which reflect what you're seeing. And if I put some depth, if I increase the depth, here you're seeing a rib and the echoes are, in, are not able to go through. And here you're seeing another intercostal space, again with pleural sliding here. This could be useful to rule out any pneumothorax. To export the images, you just have to select the images that you want to export. For example, let's see you want to export this one. You can just put this pen drive here on the USB-C. And then you click here. 
and now you can select here all the images on the left column or only the tagged ones and the file type and you can just click OK and it has already exported and now you have them here on this pendrive and you can also switch between USB-C to put it in the computer. Apart from that, this device has a very unique characteristic, which is the integration with the US2 AI company that allows a complete echo analysis in less than two minutes, uploading the images via DICOM to their server. And it's already FDA approved in the United States and is waiting for the European approval on Q1 2022. And now let's see an example of this automated echo analysis. We just need to find an echo. It doesn't need to be complete. We're gonna pick this one, for example, you see it has some pulse weight Doppler, images, clips. It also has some continuous Doppler. Here it has an Apical 4, another Apical 4. You see that the image quality might not be the optimal one. They may be redundant. And here at the end, we have the automated analysis in app of the Cosmos device. And here the Apical 4 and Apical 2 chambers that the Cosmos device selected. And here their ejection fraction and systolic volume. But now we're gonna see what this app does. So we just click here on archive and we will upload it via DICOM file to the pack server. And it has already start uploading here. Okay, so once uploaded, we go to their web page. Right now it's in beta stage, but again, they're pending their approval in Q1 2022. We sign in and here we obtain the images that we just uploaded. As you can see, the patient ID, which is invented, <laughs> is the same. And here their findings. Main one is that the ejection fraction is less than 27%. And here you can see their measurements, their normal values. It gives a lot of the information. You can pause the video if you, in case you want to read more. And you can print this in this document in case you want to give it to the patient or whatever. So it is a really interesting thing. And here, apart from the clinical notes, you can find more information and you can see the images where they did the tracings in case you disagree with some of them or you're not sure if they are match the reality or something like that. Here you can see that it only has the uh, E-wave because the patient was in atrial fibrillation and thus it doesn't detect the A wave. Here you can see the right ventricle, right atrium, and then the left ventricle ones. And here you can see the images that I uploaded. You can see a preview and then you can click in case you want to open them. In case you want to uh, do another measurement or you are not okay with the measurements that the automated app did. So that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll leave the link up to their company and their web page down below in the description box in case any one of you is interested. I will also leave an email address down below in the description box as well in case any of you have further questions. And again, thank you so much for all the support that you keep giving me and filling the channel. Thank you. Bye.